All right guys, so it was a pretty popular request to see how to do immediate loading on a single implant, so immediate temporization. So I'm gonna show you here on this Typodont. Uh, why don't we do number, this number eight? We'll go ahead and do number eight. So there's basically two ways that you do a um, immediate temporary. So one way is you do like a vacuform splint and use that vacuform splint as a template to make your temporary. This is a really crappy vacuform because I made it on this Typodont. Uh, the other way is to use the the tooth itself as a temporary. So I'll show you I'll show you that way using the tooth itself uh, to help be the to be the provisional basically. So all right, let's get started. All right, so before you start, so before you extract the tooth, you're going to take some putty. Or so you're going to take some putty. You're going to mix it up, and you're going to make a, a matrix of the facials of these teeth right here. So let's do that. All right, so here's the putty from the facial, like indexing the facial aspects of those teeth. See how it went over the occlusal aspects back here. And I, um, I captured the incisal edge, but I didn't go to the lingual there. All right, so now we have a position matrix for the anterior teeth. See? All right. All right, so this tooth is ready to come out, and this is, uh, this is the best atraumatic extraction you'll ever see. Boom, there you go. The tooth is out, all right, so the tooth is out, and now you have an extraction socket. So I'm, I'm not showing you how to place your implant, so you'll place your implant in here. I'm gonna show you how to temporize that tooth. So you'll place your implant in here. All right, so now your implant is placed right here. So you have all the ingredients you possibly need to do immediate temporization. So you have your implant nicely placed right there, and you made sure that the, um, the axis is not coming out of the facial aspect of these, um, of these teeth and you also have an intact tooth right here, or, or relatively intact tooth, at least you can use the coronal aspect, it's not broken down. Uh, you also have the putty. So you have the putty, you have the tooth, you have a nicely positioned implant, and if you wanted to do it the more old school way, you could use this vacuform splint. All right, so if you wanted to proceed with the splint, what you have to do is, um, we're gonna get this temporary abutment. So this is a titanium temporary, a temporary titanium abutment, and is it, it is engaging. So that means this part right here has a little hex on it that's gonna orient your piece into the implant. And it's not gonna rotate around. So we're gonna go ahead and insert it right there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it up. We're gonna tighten it right there. All right, now you can see that it's not coming out through the facial aspect of the teeth, or at least it's yeah, it's coming out of the cingulum. I, I like that positioning. Maybe a little bit more lingual would have been fine. Actually, no, it's, it's pretty good. All right, so now we have our temporary titanium cylinder in place there. You can go ahead and take this vacuform splint and seat it down, but it doesn't seat all the way because this titanium cylinder is too high, is too tall. So let's go ahead and cut the cylinder. I'm gonna just mark right here. I'm gonna see what notch I'm gonna cut it to. Let's see, it looks like let me grab my instrument here. That's gonna to be too tall if I cut it there. I'm gonna cut it right here. So I'm gonna do that right now. All right, so I've gone ahead and I've cut this temporary titanium cylinder. What I do is I just hold it with some hemostats and I put this uh, disc on a, um, on like a, just a lab motor and I just saw it right there. And if I need to, if it's getting too hot, I, I can dip it into a cup of water uh, but anyway, I'm holding it with this hemostat, so I'm not feeling the heat. It's it's uh, it's a lot easier this way. You're never going to be able to hold this and then cut it. I, I used to do that, but it, it's it's crazy. Don't do that. Hold the hemostats, cut it like this, and then this part just comes right off. See, easy peasy. Now you got a shortened titanium cylinder. All right, so the cylinder goes back on here. I've tightened it back up, and now you see it's shorter than the occlusal surfaces of the other teeth. And so now, if you wanted to put some of the temporary material in here and then squish it down over this. It's gonna work just fine because uh, now the temporary cylinder is not in your way. Um, again, this is a really, really, really crummy vacuform splint, so, uh, and anyhow, you'll be able to make a better one on your patient's models, I just couldn't because it was just type it up. But that's how you would do it if it was, if you were doing it the vacuform way. You just put the temp material in there, plug this up with a uh, cotton pellet, squish this down, and, uh, and let that set up. 
And when this comes off, sometimes this is hard to come off. You just kind of have to really tug at it or peel it off. Then you have your temporary material here. You just have to find the excess hole again, which should be really easy. You just take one, uh, just take a hand piece and make a little hole right in the occlusal surface. And then you'll be able to work at it till it looks like a nice tooth. But in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do it the other way, right? So we're not doing it that way. We're not doing it out of the vacuum form material. We're gonna, we have a nice intact tooth. And so we're gonna use this putty. So this putty goes back on there like that. And so now you have this putty and you have the intact tooth. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this tooth and I'm gonna cut it with the disc. So just the crown comes off and then I'll be able to put that into the putty. So let's do that right now. All right, so this is what it looks like once you cut the, the crown off of the root, but you're still not gonna be able to use this because it has all this material here that's gonna be blocking your cylinder. And so let's go ahead and hollow this out right now. All right, so now I've hollowed out the tooth. You see that I've hollowed it, quite, hollowed it out quite a bit. You wanna make sure that there's not uh, any tooth material that's any tooth material that's gonna bind against that temporary cylinder. Uh, the way I did that, I just took my high speed and this like football burr looking thing and I just stuck it in the middle there and just uh, went up and down and then side to side and kind of like swirled it just to make sure that uh, it's gonna be hollow enough. Alrighty. So in the past what I've done is I have just kind of held it in place with my fingers. So I've just kind of positioned it to the best of my ability with my fingers, right? I just hold it in place and then I just take some composite and I I inject it into like around the cylinder, uh, hoping to attach this shell to this cylinder. Um, sometimes though, if you don't hold it, if you're not really careful, you can end up with lopsided teeth and then you have to adjust them at the end just to even them off. That's totally fine. Uh, I think that still will get you a good outcome. You'll just work at it a little bit more. One little tool that will help you with that is what we made earlier by inserting this shell into this putty matrix, right? You just insert it right there. That putty holds it into place so that when you put it right here, the tooth is gonna be in the perfect position, right? So the tooth's gonna be in the perfect position and you don't have to guess about how it's gonna turn out. It'll, it'll save you time so you don't have to adjust it much later. So now that that tooth is in position and the cylinder is in position, you can go ahead and inject composite into there and attach those two. One thing that I will mention though, if you want to even go above and beyond, you can, before putting that tooth there, you can apply, you can apply some opaquer here. So just add a little bit of opaque. You know, why don't we go ahead and do that right now? All right, so let's go ahead and apply opaquer. Opaquer sometimes is tricky. A little bit goes a long way. And if you apply too much, sometimes it just looks really strange, right? So like a white out appearance. So, I'm gonna put a little bit of opaquer here. All right, so you have a little bit of opaquer here and I think this is gonna be good enough to get you a nice temporary. So I'm gonna go ahead and cure this right now. What's up with this pulsating thing? All right, so it's the moment of the truth. We're gonna attach the tooth to the temporary cylinder. So I'm gonna take this putty. I'm gonna put this in here. All right, I'm gonna put that in there. And now we're gonna attach this to this. All right, so I'm gonna take the flowable composite. I'm gonna add it here in the middle because we can always add more from the top and from the bottom. So, all right, so I'm gonna add some composite here in the middle. Now I'm gonna take that putty, oops, and I'm gonna position it right here. All right, so I've already put my composite in there, and now I'm gonna go ahead and stick my tip right there, and I'm gonna express some inside there. So now you saw how I fill in that middle area with the flowable composite. 
you probably want to do like a little rubber dam or something in there. That'll help your site stay cleaner and it'll help you avoid ripping out graft or ripping out sutures or even getting composite into that, a flowable stuck into that site, which would be a big problem. So using a rubber dam will help you stay safe for sure. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. So now you can take off your putty matrix and now you have at least initially like the beginnings of an immediate loaded temp. So what you're gonna do now is you get your driver and you're gonna put it into the access hole and pop this off really carefully. When you take it off, then you can go ahead and do a lot of fine tuning, a lot of polishing, and making sure that you have a really nicely fitting temporary. So this is what it looks like right now, but you want to go ahead and fill in all the voids and polish everything. So let's do that now. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and finish filling in all these little voids. So I'm just gonna go in there and express the composite. When you're doing the occlusal surface, you probably wanna put a little plug in there. Uh, Teflon tape would be great. For this video, I'm just gonna use this little putty plug. I would not, don't use putty in real life. Um, but just for this video I am. But yeah, you can use some Teflon tape. That would probably be the, the easiest thing to do. All right, so now you filled in all the voids and you just wanna polish all of the surfaces and cut this little ledge off. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off. I'm gonna cut that off with my high speed and polish the heck out of this thing. All right, so now you can see that I've gone ahead and I've trimmed out the excess so there's not like a ledge over like hanging off over the tooth making like a ridge lap and I've, I've smoothed that off still need some polishing I filled in the air all the voids up here but you can see that now we have an immediate loaded tooth uh, temporary ready to go on here so all you would do plug that guy in like so screw it down you just go ahead and tighten this guy up and something you'll probably still have to do is some minor touch-ups to the incisal edge. See how this incisal edge sticks out just a little bit more than that one? You just trim that down a little bit, that's okay. No big deal, no harm, no foul. But that's looking okay. Um, the tissues, uh, it's a little bit relieved off of the tissues right here, that's okay too. Uh, I just wanna make sure that there's no ridge lap that's gonna, that's gonna create um, like a bacterial trap there. But that's it guys, that's how you make an immediate loaded temporary I uh, hope that was useful. Let me know if you have any questions, okay? Drop them in the comments.